Hello folks, in this video I'm going to continue working on this jumping game in Pygame. So as far as I got last time was just to create the game window and do the initial setup with the background. What I want to do in this video is add in the actual player. So to create the player, first of all I want to load in an image for him. Now I've got this section here, load images, and at the moment all I'm loading in is the background image. Before I do that, I want to load in the player image. So the player is called jumpy, so jumpy underscore image is equal to pygame.image.load so just the same way as I did it last time with the background and now we need to tell pygame where to find this file so I've put it into this assets folder it's called jump.png there's the little guy there that means that to load it I need to give it the name and uh, file location it's in the folder called assets forward slash jump.png and then lastly dot convert underscore alpha now that the image is loaded, I can start creating the player. I'm going to do this using classes. So I'll come down here and add a comment to say player class. And I'll say class player. And as always, whenever you create a class, you start off with the constructor. So the constructor is this init method. I say def init and start feeding in the arguments that it's going to take. So it always starts with the self argument and in this case I only actually need an X and a Y so these two are going to be the starting coordinates of the player so that's the only arguments that I need for this and then I can start creating all the inputs for him so one of the variables is going to be the image what image do I want to assign to this player class well I've just loaded that in here so I can assign that as the image that I wanted to use I can say self.image is equal to jumpy underscore image so that image is going to be assigned to an instance of this class when I create it. Now this class is also going to need its rectangle. If you haven't used this before, Pygame will use rectangles for positioning and for collision and so on. And because I'm going to need all that functionality, I need a rectangle within this instance to go with the image. And the rectangle to start with is just going to be derived from the image. So we just take the image, mark out how big it is, and then draw a rectangle that's exactly the same size. I can then say self.rect is equal to self.image dot get underscore rect and that will create a rectangle from that image for me then I can position that rectangle based on these x and y arguments that I'm being fed in when I create this instance and you say self dot rect dot center is equal to x and y so we'll position the rectangle at these coordinates here now there's a lot more to add, but I'm just going to build this up in stages so that it makes sense. So that's the player class, the very basics of it set up. But of course, nothing actually happens until I create an instance of it. The class is just there within the code, but I need to create something out of it. So I'm only going to have one player on the screen, and that's going to be called Jumpy. Jumpy is an instance of this player class. So I call the player class, and in here I need to give it the arguments that it's expecting. So self, I don't need to give but X and Y I will need to supply. Otherwise I will get an error saying that it requires two arguments or three arguments and I'm not giving it enough. So the X coordinate is just going to be my screen width divided by two. I use two division signs here just to make sure that I don't get a float value. So this will just going to give me an integer and avoid any errors. That's my X coordinate. My Y coordinate is going to be screen height minus say 100, oops, minus 150 pixels. So the screen height variable is the very bottom of the screen. By saying minus 150, I'm kind of saying that the player is going to be just a little bit above the bottom of the screen. Now I'll run this just to check for any errors. It's all run okay, uh, but there's no player on the screen. Now I have created the instance, but I'm not telling Pygame within this while loop to actually draw it at any point. So that's what I need to add in now. But rather than just calling a blit method like I have here for the background, I want to code that in as part of my class. So I want this player class to have an additional method, which is going to be the draw method. So to define that, we just go in within that class, make sure that you're indenting by one and say def for define draw. And this draw method doesn't take any additional arguments, but all of the methods within a class will take the self argument. So you need to make sure that you're always putting this in. And the only function that I want within this method, or the only command, is to draw onto the screen. So again, that's done by saying screen.blit, then the image that I want to use, which is going to be self.image, which is assigned up here. 
and the location, well, I'm not going to be using X and Y because these X and Y coordinates are the starting positions. Over time, as the player moves, they're actually going to be changing. So what I'm going to be using for the coordinates is self.rect. So wherever the rectangle is, that's where I want to draw the player. Self.rect. Okay, so that gives me the straw method. Now I need to make sure I actually call it within the game loop. Let's scroll down here and just below where I've drawn the background, I will add another comment to say draw sprites. And in here I'll say jumpy, which is my instance that I've just created, dot draw. So because draw is a method within the player class, when I create this instance of jumpy, it takes these methods. It takes the constructor to create it in the first place and then it takes the draw method. If I added any more methods within this class, jumpy would always get them as well. So now let's run this code. And there you go. I've got this little frog sitting on the screen. I can't move him around. And in fact, he's a little bit small, if anything. Uh, but now I can start fleshing out that class. Now, the first thing I want to do is scale him. At the moment, he was a little bit too small. Uh, it didn't really look quite right. So if I go back up to my init method, here what I'm doing is I'm taking that jumpy image that's been loaded in and I'm assigning it into the instance straight away. But what I can do instead is take that image and transform it or scale it at this point. So I can say that self.image is going to be equal to, rather than jumpy image, it will be pygame.transform.scale. So it's going to be a scaled version of the image. So we take the image and then in another set of brackets, we tell it how big we want that to be. So for the width, I'm going to use 45 pixels and for the height, I'm going to also use 45 pixels. If I run this again, you'll notice he's gotten a little bit bigger. And just to make it a bit more obvious, I'm just going to temporarily make him a lot bigger. Run this again, and there you go. So now he's 145 pixels across and 145 pixels tall. And you can change this as much as you want. So now he's going to be a little bit stumpy. So by playing around with these numbers, you can get it looking just right. Now, although the player is coming up on the screen correctly, there is one thing that I want to check, and that is the rectangle itself. Now, it's not visible, but the rectangle is what controls this player. So I'm going to, first of all, make the rectangle visible by drawing it onto the screen. Now, I've got this draw method for the player class. So underneath what I'm currently calling screen.blit for the image, I will add another line that will say pygame.draw.rect to draw a rectangle. And the arguments here are a little bit different. So first of all, it's the screen. Then it's going to be a color, uh, which I haven't defined, but I suppose I can just do that right now. If we go back up to the main section before the game loop, before I load in my images, I'll just add a comment to say define colors. I'm going to need these later on anyway, so I may as well just do them now. So white uh, is going to be 255, 255, 255. These are RGB values, so uh, that's just the color for white. Now I can go back down to where I'm drawing uh, within this draw method. So it's going to be screen is the first argument, then the color, which is white. Then the actual rectangle itself. Well, I already have that as self.rect. Now, if I run this, I believe it's just going to override the player image. Yeah, so now I'm just ending up with a completely solid filled rectangle over the player, so you can't see the player anymore. What I can do instead is add a border. So I'll add another argument and I'll set this to two. So rather than being a solid filled rectangle, it's going to be a non-filled rectangle and it's going to have a line thickness of two pixels. Run this again, and there you go, you can see that rectangle, and it's kind of an outline of the original image. But it's not really an outline of the player himself, because you can see there's quite a lot of empty space, uh, not so much on the bottom, but left and right and the top. Now that's going to cause me some issues when it comes to collision, because it means that I'm going to be detecting collision. Remember, collision is checked with the rectangle. So it's going to be giving me false positives, because these areas here that are kind of within the rectangle, but outside of the image, are going to count as a collision. Now that means that I want to manually uh, change and tweak that rectangle. So rather than creating it from the overall image size, I want to set the sizes myself and just make it so that it's kind of just within the player sprite. So we'll go back up to my init method, the constructor, and start adding a few more arguments. Now the first one I'm going to add in underneath my self.image. This is going to be self.width. I'm going to say that the width of this player's rectangle is going to be 25 pixels. And the height is going to be 45 pixels. Uh, I just realized I made a typo there. 25 and 40. Uh, let's say 40, actually. That's what I used previously. 
And now with these variables, rather than saying that self.rect is derived directly from that image, if I open up that image again, yeah, you can see there's quite a lot of blank space around them. So rather than just taking that overall size, I'm going to create a rectangle. To create a rectangle, we call pygame.rect. Now this is going to be a capital R, so make sure you add that in. And then you just give it the overall sizes. So the x and y coordinates is going to start at 0, 0, because I haven't positioned it yet. And then the width, I've just defined self.width and self.height. So these are the arguments that you need for creating a rectangle manually. I've already defined two of them up here. 0, 0 is just the starting coordinates. The point after this is going to be exactly the same. I'm now just positioning that rectangle at x and y. If I run this again, it's going to start giving me funny results. But you can see the rectangle is not quite the same anymore. The rectangle is smaller and it's a bit more in the shape of a character because it's kind of slender and tall. But the player is being drawn outside of it. I need them to, to kind of line up with each other. So I need to offset the image against that. Now the way I can do that is within the draw method. So at the moment I'm just saying that take the, the image and draw it onto the screen at the coordinates of the rectangle. Well now instead of this I will give manual x and y coordinates. So I'll need to add another set of brackets within here one for, uh, and these are going to be the x and y. Now the x coordinate I'm going to take from the rectangle. That will be self.rect.x which is the top left corner of the rectangle and the y is self.rect.y. If I run this again it gives me pretty much the exact same results as before because that's what the code was doing previously. It was taking the x and y coordinates of the rectangle and drawing the player onto it. But now because I've broken them out into individual variables, I can offset them. So I know that I actually need to move the player to the left a little bit. So I need to subtract from the x coordinate and I need to move him up a little bit. So I need to subtract from the y coordinate. I can do that here manually by saying rect minus uh, rect.x minus 12 and rect.y minus 5. If I set this again, you can see that now it's wanting to draw it at the top left corner, but it's offset by 12 pixels and offset up the way by 5. And the result is that it's pretty much bang on in the middle of this rectangle. So now my collision is going to be a lot better. Now, of course, I do know that there's a little bit of an overlap here where the player's like bandana and a little bit of his hand does go beyond the rectangle. But these kind of tiny details, I think we can accept and it's not really that important. Overall, the majority of the player is within the rectangle now. So now it's starting to come together and the player is pretty much completely set up. So the next thing I want to do is add in some controls so I can actually move them around left and right and up and down. Now I'm going to do that in the next video. So for now, if you found this useful, then please do leave a like and consider subscribing. And thanks for watching.